Hello, and welcome to Arcadia University's BI-327 Histology course. Uh, this is the fourth part of our bone lecture, and what we're going to take a look at is bone physiology. Now, we talked about the basic characteristics of bone, and we said that it was like a lot of the other structures in the body, a lot of the specialized connective tissues within the body, uh, but it's different in that it has these inorganic components. And so what we can see is lots of calcium and phosphate that are going to be uh, deposited within the bone structure itself, which are going to be contributing to the overall characteristics of the bone. And now what we're going to see is focusing in primarily on the calcium is that about 99% of the calcium in the body is going to be stored within the bone structure. And so it's this huge reservoir, in essence, where bone is going to be storing the calcium it's available if we need it. Um, under normal circumstances, there's going to be a continuous exchange occurring between bone calcium and blood calcium because, in essence, we're going to have continual remodeling of the bone that's going to be going on throughout an individual's lifetime. And so with this diagram on the right-hand side of the slide, what we're looking at is osteoblasts, and they should be pink on this diagram, but you know we've we got to go with what we can find on, uh, on the images. The osteoblasts are going to be eroding at that bone, so you're essentially eroding the bone, depositing their enzymes, depositing their acids, breaking down the bone, and in doing so, they're going to be liberating the calcium and the phosphate, liberating the calcium because we're focusing on that at this point. Across that gap, on the other side, are going to be osteoblasts, and osteoblasts are going to be building bone, appositional growth, depositing uh, the type 1 collagen, depositing uh, the hydroxyapatite. Uh, crystals. So we're essentially eroding away on the left hand side of this, moving towards the left, and the osteoblasts are building on the right hand side and again still moving to the left. Now, this is a process, uh, this balance is going to be controlled primarily by the hormones parathyroid hormone and calcitonin, but they're going to be essentially regulating calcium deposition and calcium release. Now, parathyroid hormone acts to increase serum calcium levels. And so this is a hormone that's going to be produced by chief cells within the parathyroid gland, and they essentially are going to be responding to decreases in calcium within the bloodstream. And so parathyroid hormone is going to affect a variety of structures within the body. Uh, it's going to do two things. It's going to uh, it very quickly increase the absorption of calcium from foods within the intestinal mucosa. Uh, it's going to uh, increase calcium reabsorption from the kidneys. So if calcium is being filtered out in the kidneys, we're going to be selectively pulling it back into the body during the process of, of urine formation. And both of these things, both in the kidney and within the intestines, can occur relatively rapidly. Uh, but if we need a long-term um, solution, essentially we long, need a long-term uh, response to increasing calcium levels within the bloodstream, what we're going to see is that the parathyroid hormone is going to activate osteoclasts. And by activating osteoclasts, it's going to be promoting bone resorption. So these osteoclasts are going to essentially go through, release more acids, release more enzymes, and break down more bone, and in doing so, free up more calcium within uh, the body. So we're getting the calcium from the reservoir within the bone and into the bloodstream. Now calcitonin essentially does the opposite of that. Calcitonin is going to have an overall effect of decreasing serum calcium levels. And these are produced by parafollicular cells within the thyroid gland. And so what it's going to do is in response to elevated calcium levels within the blood is it's going to release this hormone and calcitonin is going to stimulate a whole variety of cells within the body to uptake the calcium, so draw the calcium in from the bloodstream and then either store it within the cells or expel it from the body. Now, that's going to be a rapid response. It's also going to have an effect of inhibiting the osteoclast to slow down this bone resorption process. Now, if we take a look at what occurs both normally in the body, we've got this continual balance going on in the bone remodeling process. So this continued balance between bone resorption, bone breakdown of the osteoclast, and bone building, bone deposition with the osteoclast. 
we're going to see that that's going to be a normal process that's occurring throughout a lifetime. What we see in um, older individuals, generally after about age 40 in both males and females, is that there's going to be a gradual loss in bone mass. And so this is going to be a process where, in essence, we're producing less bone but eroding bone away. And so we're shifting that balance point. And so you can see a weakening of the bone structure that can be occurring. And ultimately this could uh, develop into something like osteoporosis. Uh, a good example of this in taking a look at this is again, looking at the control mechanisms that are present within the body. Estrogen under normal circumstances is gonna be stimulating bone formation. But in postmenopausal women, we see a decrease in estrogen production, decrease in estrogen levels within the body. And with that decrease, we're going to see uh, uh, less stimulation of bone formation. And so that's going to cause a natural shift in bone resorption versus bone deposition. So we see more and more bone resorption. And so instead of a, a 0.3 to 0.5% loss of bone mass per year, we can see bone loss accelerating to anywhere from two to 3% a year. Again, because we're shifting that balance between bone resorption and bone, bone deposition. We can also take a look at nutritional effects in relationship to uh, bone uh, structure, as well as the storage of calcium and phosphate uh, within the body. If we look at individuals that have calcium or phosphate deficiencies, they're gonna have uh, a weakening of the bone matrix. And so you can see uh, essentially a weakening of the bone, less uh, support of the bone structure and deformation of the bone. Uh, a good example of this could be seen with vitamin D deficiency, which in a very extreme sense uh, can produce rickets. Uh, and rickets, uh, essentially what you can see is a weakening of the bone and the bone is unable to be weight bearing. And so instead of the nice strong bone structure we see under normal circumstances, we can actually see uh, a weakening or a, a, almost a bending of the bone structure because it's, it's more like uh, collagen than the true traditional bone structure. Uh, another example of that would be the vitamin C deficiency where we can see a scurvy uh, occurring. Uh, again, this is going to contribute to a deficient production of both collagen and the bone matrix. And so you've got a weakening in the bone, you've got delay of bone growth, and most dominantly, you're gonna see uh, an inhibition of the ability to heal bone fractures. Uh, another example uh, of nutritional effects related to bone are vitamin A deficiencies. And again, these uh, are gonna cause a, a, a slowing of bone deposition. Uh, if it occurs during critical periods of growth, you can actually see a slowing of skeletal growth and a reduced stature uh, of an individual. And then finally, uh, take a look at rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic inflammatory disease that affects um, primarily the joint cavities. And so if we take a look at what's occurring in that normal joint cavity, we've got the nice smooth uh, cartilage matrix along the articular surfaces if we have inflammation going on within that synovial space, what we're gonna have is gonna be damage to that region, damage to the cartilage cells, and ultimately uh, a breakdown of the cartilage and a breakdown uh, of the joint structure itself. And that finishes up our series of lectures on uh, bone histology. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at hoffmanj at arcadia.edu.